High and D reckon that this ionic model democratizes electrified eco technology for automotive buyers. And there's something in that. In one hit, it covers off the hybrid, plug in, and full electric market segments, showing the engineers behind established contenders like Toyota's Prius and Nissan's Leaf just how much further they could have gone. Just how far can Hyundai go with models like this in its lineup? It'll be interesting to see. Once upon a time, Hyundai built simple, cheap, budget brand cars. Now it makes models like this one, the world's first vehicle to offer the choice of three electrified powertrains. Welcome to the Ionic. It's easy to get confused these days when you're trying to buy an ecologically orientated car. Should you dip your toe in the water with a Prius-style petrol-electric hybrid or throw caution to the wind and choose a Nissan Leaf-style full electric battery power model? Or maybe go for the kind of compromise you can find in the form of one of those plug-in hybrids. Can't make up your mind? Well, evidently, Hyundai couldn't either because it's designed the Ionic to be able to offer all three options. And the result is a car that's a fundamental part of the company's plan to overtake Toyota and establish itself as the leading Far Eastern brand in Europe by 2020. By then, the Korean maker predicts that over 6 million eco cars will be being sold on our continent each year. Models look like this one are in some way electrified. It's safe to predict that quite a few of these will be Hyundai's, given that by the start of that decade, the company aims to be selling uh, no fewer than 22 different contenders of this sort. Uh, 12 hybrids, 6 plug-in hybrids, 2 full electric vehicles and 2 hydrogen-powered fuel cell models. Now, if you didn't realise this brand to be quite so advanced in this regard, uh, then you're not alone. The signs, though, have long been there for those who cared to notice them. Back in 2015, Hyundai was the very first automotive maker to launch and sell a hydrogen-powered vehicle, the iX35 fuel cell. And in the same year, its brand partner Kia introduced an all-electric EV version of its sole small crossover model, showing that the Korean conglomerate uh, has mastered battery power too. Another compact Kia crossover, the Nero, uh, shares the powertrain and platform technology of this Ionic model, although that car is only available in our market in hybrid and plug-in hybrid guises. And that's because it's with those engines that the majority of potential sales are to be made, which is why Hyundai is so keen to point out the new hybrid technology standards it's setting here, at least in comparison to the market-leading Toyota Prius. Now, the Ionic gets a proper modern lithium-ion battery rather than the old fashioned nickel metal hydride unit used in the Prius and a proper smooth shifting auto gearbox too rather than the jerky belt driven CVT unit that all hybrids have used to date. Now that does cost this car a little in terms of ultimate efficiency but Hyundai believes buyers will see that to be a price worth paying in return for what's claimed to be a much more drivable product. Now, on the subject of price, it's also worth emphasising that the Ionic's asking figures pitch in substantially below those of obvious rivals, which for quite a few buyers will be enough to make hybrid or full electric motoring uh, the kind of realistic alternative to diesel power than it never really was before. Which all sounds rather promising, doesn't it? Let's put this car to the test. It's not difficult to imagine exactly what's gone on here. Hyundai's engineers must have spent years pounding around in cars like Toyota's Prius and Nissan's Leaf, pulling them apart to try and understand what makes these models work and how they could be improved. Uh, the headline target areas uh, couldn't have been too difficult to identify. For hybrid buyers, the primary Prius problem has always been its awkward, jerky, CVT belt-driven auto gearbox. As for the Leaf, well, like all affordable all-electric Electric cars, it's always needed more driving range. The Ionic, it was clear, would need to move the game on in both of those areas. It does. Perhaps the most impressive thing about this car lies in the way that it uses so many ordinary mechanical parts to create an extraordinarily versatile blue drive technological package. 
Take the drivetrain used on the hybrid variants, which is familiar from a range of other more conventional Hyundai models featuring a 1.6 litre GDI 105 PS petrol engine mated to a proper cog driven six speed DCT dual clutch auto gearbox. The platform that all that is bolted onto is pretty ordinary too. Uh, it's fundamentally borrowed from a humble Hyundai Elantra, the brand's bread and butter focus shaped car in its home market. Of course, an awful lot of work has gone into tailoring these basic ingredients to work with an electrified remit. The rear part of that floor plan, for example, was modified to incorporate the three distinct battery sizes that would be needed for hybrid, plug-in hybrid and full electric models. On the subject of batteries, uh, this car uses modern lithium-ion units uh, like those in your phone or laptop rather than the old tech nickel metal hydride package that Toyota still insists on using in the ordinary Prius. In the standard hybrid Ionic model we're trying here, the power pack in question is just uh, 1.56 kilowatt hours in size and drives a 43.5 PS electric motor that combines with that GDI petrol engine to produce a combined 141 PS total output. Well, how does it feel? Pretty easy and effortless is the answer. I mean, you could even use the word familiar here. A rival Prius is a pretty startling thing to step into from a conventional petrol or diesel family hatch, not only because the dashboard looks so different, but also because of the thrashiness of that CVT auto gearbox we just mentioned. Now that belt-driven transmission is fine when you're simply easing around town, but as soon as the road opens up and you press the throttle, the revs roar painfully and not very much happens. Now that's, well, perhaps it's the car's way of admonishing such an environmentally unfriendly driving style. There's none of that in a hybrid Ionic. As we've said, the model uses a Korean brand 6DCT gearbox, uh, Hyundai being the very first company to have developed an ordinary twin clutch auto transmission that's able to shift quickly enough to be used in conjunction with a petrol engine and electric motor. It isn't perfect. Uh, the gearbox can occasionally jerk a little if you're particularly rough with the throttle, but by and large, the smooth drivability on offer here is in a different league from the Prius and from the Toyota Auris and the Lexus CT200H models that share the same hybrid synergy drive system, which makes the performance stats you get with this car a lot more relevant than they would normally be with a hybrid family model of this kind. Two drive modes are provided, and if you switch from the usual eco setting into the alternative quicker responding sport mode by pushing the auto gear lever over to the left, 62 miles an hour from rest is possible in 10.8 seconds en route to 115 mph. Not that you'll be often driving this Hyundai in this sort of fashion. Engine noise begins to become intrusive once you start to really rev the GDI engine, and the efficiency figures are affected far more by aggressive throttle use than they would be in a comparable diesel. Uh, you'd expect a diesel to have more mid-range pulling power too, but surprisingly, that isn't the case. This Ionic's 265 newton meter torque figure actually slightly more than you'd get from, say, a comparably priced uh, Volkswagen Golf 1.6. TDI. This hybrid, though, is a car that rewards a light touch and a very light right foot as part of an approach that's actually more satisfying than you expect it might be. A live energy flow meter graphic in the instrument cluster shows just how quickly the hybrid system switches between engine, battery, and regenerative coasting modes, and just what a difference you can make to the whole process by employing a modicum of restraint. Mind you, you'll need more than that to replicate Hyundai's claim that this car can function without engine assistance at speeds of up to 75 miles an hour. In our experience, a mere brush on the throttle will frequently see the GDI engine chipping in almost immediately. In an Ionic plug-in, there's obviously much more potential for extended full electric use thanks to the greater capacity of the considerably larger 8.9 kilowatt hour battery that drives a Pokia 61 PS electric motor. Uh, despite that, total system output remains pegged at 141 PS, so ultimate performance is pretty much the same as it is with the ordinary hybrid variant, although initial acceleration seems quicker thanks to the torque of that electric motor. Mind you, if you use too much of that, uh, you'll quickly decimate the NEDC rated 39 mile all-electric driving range. 
talking of that brings us on to the final Ionic variant, the full electric model that's offered for brave folk who are unafflicted by the complaint that makes both those other hybrid derivatives necessary, that of range anxiety. Now as electric cars evolve, this is becoming much less of an issue, though as Tesla products demonstrate, there is still plenty more potential for the mainstream EV makers to improve their products in that regard. Hyundai's first ever stab at this market delivers a slightly smaller 28 kilowatt hour battery than the 30 kilowatt hour unit used in the segment leading Nissan Leaf, but a usefully greater driving range. 174 miles plays 155. Inevitably, the need for a battery three times the size of the one in the plug-in model uh, mated to a much larger 120 PS electric motor means extra weight. Uh, the curbside figure rises by 50 kilos. Uh, in fact, though, because all that bolts mounted so low down in the car, that has a positive rather than a negative effect on drivability, uh, reducing the body roll that troubles the hybrid models at speed through tight bends. Hyundai proudly points out that an electric Ionic model has a lower center of gravity than a Volkswagen Golf GTI, which is appropriate actually because the frantic acceleration you initially get from rest in that variant is very hot hatch-like. Uh, if you're unwise enough to turn the traction control off, that Ionic will frantically spin its front wheels all the way up to 35 miles an hour. Beyond that point though, as with all electric cars, the pulling power drops off dramatically, although the 62 miles an hour point still flashes by in a fraction under 10 seconds. Switchable drive modes give you the choice of eco, normal and sport settings. There isn't a gear lever in the full electric variant. Of course, the single speed transmission doesn't really need one. Instead, small park, neutral, drive and reverse buttons are provided, along with what will initially appear to be gear change paddles behind the steering wheel. Uh, those are actually there to allow you to vary the level of regenerative braking. Now, the regen levels on offer range from subtle to aggressively intrusive, and in the latter mode, you really rarely have to touch the brake pedal. So abrupt is the off-throttle deceleration. Uh, so much so, in fact, that in testing, we found it useful to gently brush the brake pedal when we're driving in traffic to warn cars following us that we're slowing down. You'd expect any full electric model to be quieter than the rival hybrid, and of course, in town, the full battery-powered version of this Ionic is impressively silent. At highway speeds, though, uh, there's a sense in which milk float mobility seems less refined than the kind of engine-powered progress we're experiencing here in this hybrid variant. You notice wind, road and tyre roar much more when there's no power plant noise to counter it. What else? Um, well, we haven't mentioned ride quality. That's firm, but still reasonably comfortable, which is just as well because uh, no kind of adjustable damping system is uh, provided to vary it. Hyundai hasn't bothered to include its flex steer system too. Uh, that's a setup used on some other models to alter the steering weighting according to preset modes. Now, we criticized that when we tried it and suggested that it would be better for the engineers to simply develop one direct and incisive setup, and that is pretty much what they've done here. Ultimately, what's on offer here is a model that knows its market. It won't get your pulse racing, but it's fascinating, intriguing, and sophisticated in a way you simply would never have previously expected a Korean car to be. This Hyundai challenges the eco-motoring status quo in lots of ways, and exterior design is another of them. Now, prior to this model's arrival, it was generally accepted that there were only two ways to go if you were styling a hybrid or full electrically powered car. Either you made an aggressive ecological street side statement in the way that, say, a Toyota Prius or a BMW i3 does, or you visually played down the new technology and you install your sophisticated powertrain either into an existing model, say like Volkswagen's e-Golf, or into a conventionally styled new one, uh, say like Kia's Nero. Hyundai alone appears to think that there's scope for some middle ground here. Now, out on the road, this Ionic isn't styled to sneer at conventional planet-polluting people, but it does have a faintly futuristic air. Now, we'd agree that the looks aren't especially arresting, but there is a sense of sleek modernity here. And if you were going to characterize that to inquiring friends by uh, saying perhaps that it looks a little bit like a Tesla, then we're sure its career makers wouldn't object. 
It's certainly very sleek with a class-leading drag coefficient of just 0.24 CD that embarrasses a rival Prius uh, thanks to design touches like front wheel air curtains and a special aerodynamic floor panel that covers the underside of the car. It's also slightly lighter than that rival Toyota. The 1,370 kilo curb weight is enough to see this Ionic weighing in at over 250 kilos less than a comparable family size model like Hyundai's own i40. Now, most manufacturers achieve that kind of huge saving by designing super light underpinnings. But in this case, the platform is the simple chassis used by the brand's focus size Elantra family hatch. And that's a model no longer sold in our market. Now, to lighten the load, uh, the designers had to sweat the details. Some of the options they chose are fairly obvious, uh, like the adoption of aluminium for the bonnet and the tailgate, but a lot of the weight saving has been generated by the combination of hundreds of little detail changes. Um, let's take one example. Uh, the rear parcel shelf is 25% lighter than it is on other Hyundai models. In terms of aesthetics, uh, well, from a front perspective, two distinct styling finishes are on offer across the Ionic lineup. Uh, that this is a hybrid model is evidenced by the fact that it features the brand's signature hexagonal grille. Of course, on the battery powered full electric variant, a grille isn't needed, well, not for cooling anyway. We would argue that it is required for stylistic reasons, uh, the battery powered version being saddled with a rather ugly blanking panel that can be ordered in a choice of grey shades or in polar white. Now, if you can match those colours to a comparable body shade, then the visual impact of that feature can be diminished a small but welcome amount. Uh, across the range, these C-shaped LED daytime running lights come as standard, but the headlight technology varies quite a lot with halogen or these bi-xenon beams on ordinary hybrid derivatives, but full LED lamps fitted to plug-in and full electric models. Another distinguishing feature lies with the colour of this trimming strip below the bumper. It's blue or silver for hybrid models and copper coloured on the electric version. In profile, conventionality reigns, partly because you get the impression that the designers were very heavily influenced by the two Far Eastern family hybrids that were on sale during this car's development period. Uh, this upper character line above the door handles is very much like that of a Mark III model Toyota Prius, while the squared off rear seat pillar it leads to is exactly like that found on a second generation Honda Insight. Uh, slightly more distinctive is this lower door sill rubbing strip. That's another area that features copper coloured trimming on the full electric variant. As for the wheels, well, stick to what's provided as standard is our advice, uh, which means 15 inch rims on the standard hybrid and 16 inches on the plug-in and full electric models. Buyers opting for top premium SE trim on an ordinary hybrid get the option of these smart 17 inches, but they do make quite an impact on running cost returns. Now, another feature that seems to be a trademark flourish of Far Eastern hybrid model design is the way that the tailgate glass is divided by this centrally mounted spoiler, which in this case features a neatly integrated high-level stoplight. At each corner, it blends into tail lamp clusters that feature distinctive LED illumination. That's providing you avoid entry-level SE trim. Uh, further down, a glossy black plastic insert in the bumper breaks up the smooth surfaces, and below the lower centre section, there's more colour strip model differentiation. So let's move inside where you'll find a cabin that's intentionally bereft of obviously futuristic design. Now, presumably the idea here was to appease people put off by the nerdy vibe of a Prius or a Leaf and make the transition from an ordinary petrol or diesel powered family hatch into one of these as painless as possible. Now, in actual fact, though, there's quite a lot that's ecologically sophisticated in here. Uh, the headlining and the carpet use materials taken from sugarcane. Uh, some of the components are painted with renewable ingredients extracted from soybean oil and the interior door covers are made of natural plastic combined with powdered wooden volcanic stone. Now since you never know any of that from a casual glance it's probably just as well that Hyundai has added in some coloured accents to underline this Ionic model's eco credentials. Uh, this blue decorated strip at the top of the centre stack designating hybrid models. Uh, you get silver accents with the plug-in variant and copper coloured trimming with the electric version.
Peer through the flat bottom three spoke steering wheel and further subtle eco touches become apparent. A TFT instrument cluster is provided on all models and if you can avoid base SE trim it'll be eight inches in size with the display flanked on either side by an eco driving meter on the left and a battery charge indicator on the right. Now between these readouts the cluster graphics are tailored to the driving mode you've selected. So in eco mode it simulates a familiar speedometer needle next to which you can view an energy flow diagram with real-time readouts showing you exactly what's currently being powered by what. Now in the sport setting the central graphic changes into a revolving speedometer surrounded by an analog style rev counter. Anything the instrument binnacle can't tell you will almost certainly be covered off by the varied buttons and screens you'll find here on the centre stack. Now Hyundai clearly doesn't subscribe to the current trend for getting rid of nearly every fascia button and relocating it into infotainment screen menus so there's still a lot to get to grips with here. As you'd expect in the modern family hatch, a touchscreen monitor assumes centre dash prominence and provided you can avoid that base SE trim level, it'll be supplied in a decently shaped 8-inch size, uh, complete with satellite navigation with lifelong map updates, a high-quality Infinity DAB sound setup, an integrated rear-view camera and access to the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring systems. And the package also includes a range of TomTom Tom Live services that alert you to speed cameras, update you on the weather and provide accurate information on traffic jams and roadworks. Further down, the design of the centre console varies depending on whether you've chosen the full electric model or gone for one of the hybrids. Uh, go the petrol electric route and you get this conventional auto gear lever, uh, something Hyundai's designers decided the full electric version didn't need. So with that variant, you control the single speed transmission with small buttons for park, neutral, drive or reverse. Now that frees up space for a couple of welcome additions that you have to do without on an ionic hybrid. One is an electric handbrake switch on this petrol electric model uh, you're stuck with one of those clunky floor pedals and the other is a couple of usefully sighted and decently sized cup holders uh, there's just one proper cup receptacle between the seats in this hybrid model and that's just behind a smaller cubby for coins and small items Talking of interior storage, all Ionics feature a properly shaped glove box, decent door pockets and a compartment for your sunglasses above the windscreen. Uh, there's also a useful slot moulded by the centre armrest for a tablet computer, although that does restrict the size of the lidded storage box between the seats. Uh, now we should also mention this storage area in front of the gear stick that's close to the USB and AUX inputs, plus a couple of 12 volt connections and in most models it also incorporates the useful wireless charging mat for your phone. Uh, what else? Well, we could do without the musical chimes provided at start-up and power-down, but build quality from the Soul factory uh, seems strong, and there are some nice soft-touch materials used around the fascia. Finding and maintaining a comfortable driving position is eased by plenty of seat and wheel adjustability, plus the standard inclusion of electric lumbar support. The general ergonomics seems sound too, although the swept back rear styling means that your view out of the back when parking is a bit compromised, both by the swept back roofline and the central bar across the tailgate glass. Now that's apparently something Hyundai is well aware of, hence the decision to include rear parking sensors and a rear view camera as standard across the range. Now time to move rearwards and take a seat in the rear. Now that's a process that, unless you're really quite short, will involve the need for a slight incline of your head below this sloping roof line. Now having done that, you might not be too surprised to find that once inside, uh, as in a uh, rival Toyota Prius, headroom is at something of a premium for taller folk. Now normally these seats would have been positioned a little lower to compensate for this swept back ceiling, but that's not possible here because they sit right on top of the powertrain's battery pack. Uh, at least legroom is pretty adequate, even for quite tall folk. And thanks to a low centre transmission tunnel, it should be possible to take three adults across the back seat here in reasonable comfort, providing the journey in question isn't too long. Uh, practical touches, they include a centre armrest with two cup holders, uh, netted mat pockets in the seat backs and door bins that are just big enough to hold a reasonably sized water bottle. 
Finally, let's take a look at the boot space on offer. Now, it wasn't so long ago that one of the disadvantages of buying a hybrid or an electrically powered car was that you had to accept the need for a smaller boot. All that battery technology had to sit somewhere. Now, there are no issues like that with an Ionic, or at least not with an Ionic hybrid anyway. Lift the aluminium tailgate. Surprisingly, there's no power operated option. And at first glance, the area provided, though it is wide and well shaped, seems shallower than it would be an arrival Prius. An illusion, as it turns out. Both Ionic hybrid models can deliver 443 litres of cargo capacity or 550 litres if you stack your stuff up to the roof. That's 100 litres more than you get in that Toyota, which is particularly impressive given that the total body length of this Hyundai is 70 millimetres less. To give you a bit of extra perspective, uh, the capacity here is also 63 litres more than you get on a conventional Volkswagen Golf. Uh, there's another stowage area beneath the boot floor, but it's uh, mostly taken up with the spare wheel. With an Ionic electric model, the designers had the much bigger headache of having to accommodate a much larger battery. Now, to try and fit it in without too much of an impact on trunk space, they ditched the multi-link rear suspension setup used on the hybrid models, and at the same time, they discarded the space saver spare wheel that's also provided with these variants. Ultimately, though, only so much could be done. Uh, carriage capacity on fully electrified Ionic variants falls to 350 litres or 450 five if you load up to the roof. When you push the 6040 split folding rear bench forward, it doesn't free up a completely flat loading area, but you do get as much space as likely buyers will need. 1,505 litres being provided on the hybrid models like this one. Uh, the figure falls to 1,410 litres on the full electric version. No matter how far the Hyundai brand has come, customers still associate it with value for money. That's something this Ionic aims to redefine in the automotive eco sector. So think in terms of this hybrid variant as being the most affordable way into the model line, with the full electric model being the most expensive option, and the plug-in hybrid variant pitching in somewhere in between. So... How much are we actually talking about? Well, Ionic Hybrid Motoring starts with a base spec SE model that's priced at around £20,000, and you can add either £1,800 or £3,600 to that figure if you want plusher premium or premium SE levels of trim. It's the premium SE variant that we've been testing here. If you prefer the plug-in version, then think in terms of prices in the region of around £23,500 after a bit of dealer negotiation and subtraction of the £2,500 government plug-in car grant. Now, the value of that grant rises to £4,500 for full battery power models like the Ionic Electric, which means that prices for that variant can begin from just under £25,000 once the Chancellor's contribution has been subtracted. Now, that sum would buy you premium trim with another £1,800 necessary to get the top spec premium SE model. So what kind of value proposition do those kinds of prices represent? Well, a very complete one, as we're now going to see. As an example of that, let's look at this hybrid model. Now, its closest rival, Toyota's Prius, costs nearly £3,500 more. Now, true, the Prius can deliver efficiency figures that are slightly sharper, but that is a big price difference, made all the more difficult to stomach by the fact that the Toyota has a jerkier auto gearbox and a smaller boot. Toyota offers much the same hybrid power plant in its more affordable Auris family hatch, but that car doesn't offer any efficiency advantage over an Ionic, and it comes with the same drawbacks as its Prius stablemate, and it still costs uh, around £1,000 more than this Hyundai, despite inferior levels of equipment. So, if Toyota is struggling to match this Ionic hybrid's value proposition, can other brands do any better? Well, no, not really. Uh, the next most obvious alternative to look at is the car that's pretty much exactly the same as this one under the skin, Kia's Nero. That model, though, costs around £1,300 more than this one in entry-level form, and it costs around 10% more to run because it's significantly heavier and less aerodynamic. It also has less cabin space and a smaller boot. Other hybrid segment alternatives are even more difficult to justify against this Hyundai. Um, a Lexus CT200H costs around £2,500 more it's less efficient and it's less spacious than an Ionic. Uh, otherwise, the only other option we can think of is Ford's Mondeo Hybrid, a car that costs over £7,000 more and has been thoroughly overtaken in terms of petrol-electric technology. 
So, chalk up one value victory to Hyundai for hybrid buyers. Will a plug-in hybrid Ionic be likely to offer an equally compelling pricing proposition, though? Well, pretty much yes. Now, earlier we talked in terms of asking figures for that variant starting from under £24,000. So, once again, this Hyundai can easily undercut its identically engineered Kia Nero counterpart. Other similarly sized plug-in alternatives are much more expensive. Uh, think in terms of needing around £3,000 more for a Toyota Prius plug-in, around £4,000 more for a Volkswagen Golf GTE, uh, around £5,000 more for a plug-in hybrid Mini Countryman, around £6,000 more for a BMW 225XE, around £9,000 more for an Audi A3 Sportback e-tron and around £13,000 more for the plug-in segment market leader, Mitsubishi's Outlander PHEV. Now, another way to go might be to get yourself the version of BMW's i3 electric car that includes a range extender engine. But one of those would still cost you around £6,000 more than an Ionic plug-in hybrid variant. Finally, let's look at the value proposition surrounding the full battery-powered Ionic electric model, uh, which you may remember earlier we said was priced from just under £25,000. Now, the most obvious alternative that will probably spring to mind here for potential buyers is Nissan's Leaf. And at first glance, this car does appear to be able to undercut this Hyundai. An entry-level Leaf costs from under £22,000. Read the small print, though, and you'll find that that figure applies only to the old tech 24 kilowatt model that gives you only 124 miles of driving range. That's way off the 174 mile figure of this Hyundai. Even the more powerful 30 kilowatt leaf model can't get close to that. It delivers 155 miles, and that car costs around £1,200 more than a comparable Ionic. In terms of technology and driving range, uh, Volkswagen's e-Golf or a BMW i3 would probably represent better bets, but full electric models like those will cost you about £3,000 more than a comparable full electric Ionic. Otherwise, the only other full electric models on the market are too small and too range restricted to merit serious consideration for family buyers. Now, if having considered all of that, you conclude that there's an Ionic that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Hyundai has been when it comes to standard kit. So let's take a look at that. Now, if compromises have been made in this regard, you'd expect to see them on the price leader for the lineup, the base SE version of the ordinary hybrid model. Yet, this comes with niceties like dual zone climate control, a rear camera parking system with rear sensors, uh, auto headlamps with LED daytime running lights, a driver's seat that features electric lumbar adjustment, solar glass and a 5-inch touchscreen entertainment setup with Bluetooth connectivity, a 6-speaker DAB stereo and USB. USB and AUX imports. You get 15 inch alloy wheels too, although there doesn't seem much point in having them since the rims are covered by plastic wheel trims. An emergency spare wheel is provided for hybrid customers, but on the full electric model, uh, you have to make do with a tyre repair kit. The next trim level up for hybrid buyers, premium, will be your Ionic starting point if you're looking at the plug-in or full electric models. Uh, highlights here include a larger 8-inch centre dash touchscreen that includes satellite navigation, uh, traffic messaging, TomTom Tom Live services, an upgraded Infinity sound system and access to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto so you can sync your phone in with the monitor and use various journey-related apps. Um, premium buyers also get buy on headphones headlights, power folding mirrors, heat for the steering wheel and the front seats, a useful wireless phone charging pad, a keyless entry system, an extra USB port in the driver's armrest, uh, an auto dimming rear view mirror and a larger 7 inch TFT display for the driver's supervision instrument binnacle. On the electric model you get 16 inch wheels too. The relatively affordable Ionic pricing structure might leave you able to go even further up the range, in which case you'll find yourself looking at a premium SE variant like the car we've got on test here. Now here there's full leather upholstery, powered and ventilated front seats, heated rear seats, front parking sensors, full LED headlights, uh, alloy pedals, auto wipers and an auto defog system for the front screen. And options. Well, all customers will get the opportunity to specify metallic paint. Uh, we've got Marina Blue here, uh, while buyers of this top premium SE variant get to dilute this Hyundai's efficiency figures by adding in larger 17-inch alloy wheels like the one we've got fitted here. 
Otherwise, it's a question of uh, delving into the Hyundai accessories catalog. Here, there are 15 and 16 inch alloy wheel designs that you might like, uh, a couple of video recorded dash cam units if you want to join that current trend. Uh, practicalities include a mat or a boot liner to protect the luggage area and a protective foil that will guard against scratches on the rear bumper loading lip. Less sensible options include blue LED footwell illumination for the back of the car, uh, LED puddle lights or even an LED door projector that will project the Hyundai logo onto the ground as you get out of the driver's seat at night. Unlike on a Toyota Prius though, it's not possible to order a tow bar. On to safety. Now, it would be surprising if a car as advanced as this one wasn't equipped with most of the latest camera-based safety technology, and sure enough, this one is. As we expected, an autonomous emergency braking system is standard across the range, and that's one of those setups that scans the road ahead as you drive in search of potential collision hazards. If one's detected, you'll be warned. Uh, if you don't respond, or perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Now, the same camera system drives another standard inclusion, uh, this car's lane departure warning system with lane keep assist feature, and that's there to let you know if if your Ionic is inadvertently straying over the road markings. Now, if you don't correct that, then the car will gently guide itself back into the middle of its carriageway. As for other cutting-edge safety systems, well, all models get smart adaptive cruise control, which you can set to automatically keep your safe distance behind the car in front on the highway. I go for a full electric model or specified top premium SE trim with a hybrid variant, and that feature gains a stop-and-go function that will kick in if you come across a motorway tailback and automatically slow and stop your Ionic and then uh, automatically start it off again. Other extra safety features uh, that include a standard with premium SE trim uh, also include a blind spot detection system that on the move uh, alerts you if you're about to dangerously pull out to overtake in front of another vehicle and a rear cross traffic alert system that will warn you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space. Otherwise, the standard safety equipment tally across the range includes pretty well all the features you expect to find. So there's ESC stability control and ABS braking, plus twin front side and curtain airbags, as well as another for the driver's knees. In addition, you get hill start assist control to prevent the car from rolling backwards as you pull away on an incline, along with ISOFIX charge seat fastenings and a tyre pressure monitoring system. So, just how far do you go in pursuit of ultimate efficiency when you're designing a car of this kind? Well, in answering that question, let's first look at the standard hybrid variant that we're trying here. Now, this model could probably have achieved class-leading fuel and CO2 stats had Hyundai chosen to copy its rivals and equip it with a light, belt-driven CVT auto gearbox, but they didn't. Installing a proper, cog-driven, dual-clutch auto would, the Korean engineers knew, cost this car a few efficiency percentage points, but the gains in smooth drivability would, they felt, uh, for most owners, more than compensate for that. Whether you agree or not will, of course, come down to personal preference. If you drive around everywhere like a vicar on a Sunday afternoon perambulation, then this Ionic 6 DC Auto probably won't feel much different to the rubber band style box you'll get in a rival Toyota Prius. But as we've said elsewhere in this review, once you start to push things along a little, the smooth shifting advantages of the conventional transmission really start to become apparent. Here, you can have them without too much of a running cost downside. Uh, to be specific, an Ionic hybrid manages 83.1 mpg on the combined cycle and 79 grams per kilometre of CO2. That is enough to slightly improve on the figures that you get from the Kia Nero and the hybrid versions of Toyota's Auris and the Lexus CT200H. Now, to do better, you'd have to spend around £3,000 more on a Toyota Prius, which manages 94.1 mpg and 70 grams per kilometre. A few points are worth making here. First, the CO2 difference between an Ionic and a Prius will see this model attract a slightly higher 15% benefit in kind taxation rating. Uh, base versions of the Toyota have an 11% rating, and that means that higher rate company car drivers will save about £300 a year in BIK payments by running the Toyota. 
In addition, owners of this Hyundai will have to pay the London congestion charge. Uh, they wouldn't be troubled with that if they'd bought an entry-level Prius. Annoyingly, this Ionix CO2 figure is fractionally above the 75 grams per kilometre threshold that products have to dip below in order to qualify for charge exemption. Can all of this justify the significant Prius ownership premium? Well, you need to do your sums, but be sure you take a test drive in both cars before you decide. Whichever car you choose in the Eco segment, equipping it with larger wheels will have quite an impact on your running cost returns, and that is certainly the case here. Uh, with the 17-inch rims fitted to this test car, uh, the fuel figure falls to 70.6 mpg and the CO2 figure rises to 92 grams per kilometre. Still, even at that level, your Ionic would be a lot more economic and a lot cleaner than something more conventional, like an equivalently priced Volkswagen Golf 1.6 litre TDI, a car that in comparable DS SG form puts out 102 grams per kilometre of CO2 and returns 72.4 mpg on pricier diesel fuel. Of course, there'll be no CO2 issues of any kind if you opt for one of the two other ionic power plants. Uh, the plug-in hybrid variant puts out just 26 grams per kilometre of CO2 and it's supposed to be able to return a combined cycle reading of 130 mpg. Those figures are based on any DC calculations and they assume that owners will be making full use of the 39 mile driving range potential that's provided by that variant's 8.9 kilowatt hour battery. That is significantly further than you can go in other rival plug-in models. A pricier Prius plug-in, for example, offers a rated 30-mile range. Charging an Ionic plug-in hybrid takes 2 hours 15 minutes using a 3.3 kilowatt AC charger. Ultimate eco credentials, though, can only be satisfied by the full electric Ionic variant. Here, a much larger 28 kilowatt hour battery increases a potential NEDC rated driving range to 174 miles. That looks competitive. A 30 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf manages 155 miles, an e Golf manages 186 miles, and a BMW i3 195 miles. The Ionic's charging time stack up to segment standards too. It's possible to replenish the lithium-ion cells with a charge of up to 80% in just 33 minutes, providing you have access to a 50 kilowatt DC fast charger. Now, if you haven't, uh, then a home wall box will recharge a full electric Ionic model completely in four hours, 25 minutes. Or if you're somewhere with only a normal three pin plug to connect into, an overnight 12 hour charge should be enough to top the car up completely. Having given you the stats, it's also worth touching on a few of the ways that Hyundai has managed to achieve them. Uh, as you expect, plenty of effort went into weight reduction, hence the widespread use of aluminium, which has helped to make the Ionic one of the lightest cars in its segment. The full electric version, for example, is around 100 kilos lighter than a comparable 30 kilowatt Nissan Leaf. The class leadingly slippery aerodynamic figure of 0.24 CD also plays its part, aided by an active grill flap that stays shut to help the engine warm up as quickly as possible and then opens to aid cooling before closing again at higher speeds to assist with drag reduction. Other factors that contribute to this ionic efficiency showing include low rolling resistance tyres and on hybrid models there's an auto stop start system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, uh, when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Talking of the engine, it's a particularly economic unit. Engineers measure frugality in terms of thermal efficiency, that's the extent to which any power plant is able to convert the energy that's available in its fuel into usable energy to power the vehicle. Judge this way the Hyundai's 1.6 litre Kappa GDI unit attains an impressive 40% thermal efficiency rating, which matches the rival Prius's power plant, which is unbettered in the class. Of course, the driver needs to play his or her part too. In normal use, hybrid Ionic models will default to an eco driving mode, which optimizes throttle settings and gear selection for better fuel economy. Uh, you can also do your bit by keeping an eye on the power gauge to the left of the instrument vehicle and staying in the green eco or blue charge zones. Plus, there's also a display you can select on the right-hand side of the cluster uh, that will give you a score for economical, normal, and aggressive driving. And there is the option to switch into an energy flow meter diagram uh, and that will allow you to constantly monitor what in the hybrid system is being driven by what. Now that diagram is also duplicated in a larger form in the hybrid displays section of the centre dash screen uh, and that's also where you'll find a readout that grades you on the eco level that your recent driving merits.
Hyundai hopes you'll be so engrossed with all of that that you won't notice the lack of a couple of the features that you find on the rival Prius. Uh, there's no EV button to keep the car all electrically powered for short distances, nor does the 6 DCT auto gearbox offer any kind of specific setting to maximise regenerative braking, uh, the system by which energy that would be lost otherwise as heat is recycled back to the battery. On the full electric model, it is possible to influence the regenerative process, though. Uh, paddles behind the steering wheel are provided to let you pick from four strengths of brake regeneration. Now, the strongest of these slows the car so dramatically that you'll hardly ever have to use the brake pedal at all. That, of course, means you'll save on brake wear. Uh, owners report that pads last a little longer than on a conventional car with the hybrid models and a lot longer with the full electric variants. Now, that's one of the reasons why your maintenance costs in running this Hyundai will be significantly lower, but there are also lots of others. After all, with an Ionic, there's no starter motor or alternator to go wrong, there's no drive belts to break, and no particulate filter to get clogged up with diesel fumes. Now, the hybrid setup has a good record for minimizing tire and the battery will last the life of the car. Uh, the car will need a routine checkup every 12 months or 10,000 miles, whichever comes around first. And you can budget ahead for uh, garage visits by opting for one of the Korean company's fixed price service plans. There's a three year package that covers you for up to 30,000 miles, or a five year program that extends that to as much as 50,000 miles. On to the warranty cover. Now, like all Hyundais, the Ionic comes with a five-year package, including free annual checks for the same duration, uh, plus roadside assistance that on a full electric model will additionally cover you should you ever find yourself stranded and run out of charge. Plus, you get the usual 12-year anti-perforation warranty for the bodywork. Uh, what else? Uh, are you worried about the complexity of the hybrid system? Well, don't be. There are now millions of petrol electric models pounding global roads. And the facts are that hybrid technology generates fewer warranty claims than conventional petrol or diesel engines do. Anyway, there's a separate guarantee for the battery pack that lasts eight years and 125,000 miles. All of this plays its part in helping to keep residual value strong. Uh, after three years and 36,000 miles, industry experts predict that the hybrid variant we're trying here will retain around 48% of its original value, which is marginally better than a rival Toyota Prius. And it means that this car would probably be worth around £11,000 if you were to sell it on after three years of use. A plug-in Ionic should deliver similarly strong figures, while the electric variant manages a very creditable 27%. Now, if that sounds like quite a drop, then that's because battery-only cars traditionally don't perform well for residuals. If it helps, I'll tell you that a comparable residual figure for a rival Nissan Leaf is 17%. And finally, let's have a look at the insurance groupings. Uh, the standard hybrid variant is rated at Group 10 or Group 11 in this top premium SE form, and the full electric model is rated at Group 16 or Group 17 in premium SE, guys. There's little doubt that a significant number of buyers are now absolutely ready for a credible, comparably priced alternative to conventional petrol or diesel power. Now, we've discovered in this test that this Ionic gives them exactly that. With diesel engines becoming increasingly discredited and the automotive industry's environmental responsibilities becoming ever more acute, this car's time has come. Don't underestimate the scale of what Hyundai's done here. Toyota has been perfecting hybrids for a quarter of a century. In the same period, the Renault-Nissan conglomerate has spent billions on electric car technology. Yet, neither of these industry giants have produced as complete an eco-motoring solution as is served up by the Ionic. To come from nowhere and deliver a product as competitive as this is a considerable achievement, particularly when the car in question can undercut the opposition so significantly on price. Of course, it's not perfect. Uh, the looks aren't especially arresting. Uh, some rivals can offer you a fraction more all-electric driving range. And in the case of this car, the most affordable hybrid model, it's certainly true that something like a Prius would give you a little more running cost efficiency, although only because that Toyota's awkward jerky CVT auto gearbox compromises the driving experience. In an Ionic, uh, that's a lot smoother and more sophisticated, though as with almost any car of this sort, it's certainly not calculated to please the driving enthusiast. 
Still, if you can accept that, uh, get on with the styling and adjust to the frugally focused manner that this car will encourage you to drive in, then we think you'll probably like mostly everything else about it. Less than half a century ago, European car makers helped establish Hyundai. Now, this brand is showing them the future of motoring. Isn't it ionic? Don't you think? <laughs>